Hello everyone, I'm Law of the West, and this video is going to be a bit of a combination of what my first impressions are of the 400i, as well as being a buyer's guide and even a short versus episode all wrapped up into one. So I'll start things off by going over the ship in general terms and talking about what some of my personal observations are about it. Then I'll be comparing the 400i to the Corsair and the Connie in terms of its abilities, its cargo, vehicle storage, and its firepower. Then I'll finish things off by talking about what roles are best suited for this ship, and what kinds of players the 400i would end up appealing to the most. So, what type of ship is it, and what kind of role does it play? The 400i is described as being a competitor for both the RSI Constellation and the Drake Corsair, and its primary focus is on exploration, but its design also places a heavy emphasis on luxury and comfort. But is it really a competitor for the Corsair or the Constellation's Explorer variant? When it comes to its physical size, the amount of crew that it can accommodate, and what you can use it for, then the answer is definitely yes. It seems to do a nice job of hitting that sweet spot which exists between medium and large ships. The 400i also provides all the amenities that you'd find in a larger vessel, yet it handles a lot more like it's medium sized. The interior does feel a bit claustrophobic, but the multi-level design makes it easy to get around, and its lift is centrally located so that it's adjacent to nearly every room on both floors. When you look at it from the outside, it's rather impressive how they managed to get two decks, a hangar, and a cargo bay, as well as all of its other amenities inside of that small frame. And lengthwise, the 400i is roughly as long as the Connie, and believe it or not, it's actually slightly longer than the Corsair. But in comparison to those other ships, the 400i has a lot less of a cross-section, which means that it's going to have a noticeably smaller signature. The 400i is divided up into two decks. The lower one has a cargo bay, escape pods, internal access to its components, a docking collar, the X-1 bay, and a bunch of suit lockers. This is also where the main entrance and exit from the ship is located, and where you'll find its central lift and a ladder that you can use to travel between decks. The upper deck houses the habitation section and command center for the ship. Here you'll find the captain and crew's quarters, a single standalone bathroom, the bridge, a holla table, and the kitchen. When I flew the 400i for the first time, one of the things that most impressed me about it was the wide open panoramic view that you'll get from the flight deck. It was very reminiscent of what I saw while standing on the bridge of the jump, and in a lot of ways it makes you feel like you're flying around in a mini version of the 890. The interior has a very intelligent design, and like I said before, it's easy to get around inside of it. It can comfortably accommodate three crewmen and there's plenty of room within the ship's interior for everyone. The 400i can perform any of the tasks that the other two explorer ships can handle, and the built-in holla table can be used as a command and control center for a small expedition fleet. So when it comes to its capabilities, I feel that the 400i is a good competitor for the Connie and the Corsair. But when it comes to firepower, then I'd say the answer is no. And that's because the 400i was not intended to be a combat vessel. It purposely trades off firepower for being faster and a lot better at maneuvering than those other two ships. In comparison, the 400i is going to be the fastest in a straight line, and the best when it comes to its pitch and yaw abilities. And this defensive stance that it takes is even reflected in how its turrets are arranged. Both of its remote turrets can turn around at a full 360 degree circle, but they provide a lot better coverage along the rear of the vessel than they do for the sides or the front of it. And this is because the dorsal turret's view is partially blocked by the upper deck, and the ventral turret is somewhat blocked by the 400i's nose. So both of the turret operators are going to have a tough time trying to shoot at whatever the main weapons are firing at. Its only forward-facing weapons are two size 3 gimbaled guns that are operated by the pilot, which can be swapped out for two fixed size 4s. And for missiles, it has 16 size 1s and 16 size 2s. So how does the 400i compare to these other ships when it comes to vehicle hauling and cargo capacity? The 400i has roughly less than half the storage space of the Connie, and carries a little more than half of what the Corsair can hold, so in that aspect it's not even halfway there. But the 400i isn't a cargo hauler, and if that's your concern, then there's plenty of other ships that are the same size, yet are capable of transporting a lot more than either the Connie, the Corsair, or the 400i could. Explorers from this size category aren't typically going to be good at doubling as cargo vessels. And although the 400i doesn't match up to the Corsair or the Connie when it comes to its hauling capacity, it does have enough space to carry smaller, more highly valued cargo like contraband or artifacts, and any other type of unique items that you may come across during the course of your adventures. So I've looked at the 400i in terms of its abilities, weapons, and cargo storage, but how does it compare when it comes to hauling vehicles? 
One of the 400i's selling points is that it can carry both cargo and a vehicle at the same time. What that means is that it has a cargo hold that's located in the stern of the ship and a separate bay that's located in the 400i's nose that was purpose-built to carry an X-1. The X-1 bay wasn't designed to hold anything other than a specialized gravlev. But of course, me being me, I had to try and see what else I could fit into it. So far, I could get a Grey Cap PTV inside. You can also technically get a Nox into the bay since the Nox has the right proportions to be able to fit inside of it. And in the future, it should also be able to hold a Ranger. I tried to get a Dragonfly in, but it was just way too big in terms of both its length and width. And I hadn't really considered this before, you could also store a few small boxes on the lift. That would give you easy access to a couple of SCUs worth of medical supplies, ammo, or whatever else you could manage to stash inside of it. But you're not just restricted to carrying things in the X-1 bay. You could also use the cargo bay for storing goods and vehicles. This space is technically big enough to carry a rock, all of the cyclone variants, any type of gravlev, and of course the Greycat buggy. So in essence, anything that's smaller than a rover would theoretically be able to fit into it. And the only vehicles you're going to have a problem getting into the bay are the Rock and the Cyclone MT. There's enough space for them to fit into the lift, but it's going to be too tight of a squeeze for them to try and get them under the 400 eyes belly. But regardless of whatever it is that you end up parking inside of the cargo bay, if you have a vehicle in there, then you're not going to be able to carry cargo. So it's either going to be one or the other, but not both. So I think that once again, the Connie has the advantage in this area since it can transport something like an environmentally sealed rover, and it doesn't have any issues with carrying any of the Cyclones or even a Rock or the DS variant. And on top of that, it also has a built-in dock for a snub fighter, which for right now seems like it would be a lot more of a useful thing to have access to than a Gravlev bike. Although in the future, Gravlevs are going to end up having a lot larger of a role to play, especially after more no-fly zones have been introduced into the game. But when compared to the Corsair, I give the advantage to the 400i. This is only because the Corsair doesn't have any special storage for an additional vehicle. When it comes to storage, it's going to end up being a straight up choice between either having a vehicle or cargo space. Although it does look like it's going to be able to carry a rover, so that's going to be another point in its favor for the Corsair. And I'd like to state as a disclaimer that at the time this video was made, the Corsair wasn't available in game, but it will be very soon, and I look forward to doing a more in-depth comparison of these two ships after it is. So what kind of players would be interested in getting a 400i? This ship is going to be for anyone who's less interested in starting a fight than they are with being able to avoid one in the first place. It has a small cross-section and is relatively fast for its size, and it has an advanced sensor array. All of these things should give it an edge when it comes to evading other ships, and you could reduce its signature even further by equipping it with stealth components. It's also one of the smallest and fastest ships that has a large shield generator. So when you're being pursued, the shield should be strong enough to soak up most of the damage while the rear-facing turrets try to deter any would-be attackers long enough for the ship to make its escape. And the 400i is also a good choice for anyone who's a fan of the Origin aesthetic, but wants something that's a bit bigger than the 300 series, but doesn't want to fully commit to owning a 600i. The interior of this ship is really well thought out. It has all the comforts of home, and its size and abilities make it a prime candidate for being used for other things that goes well beyond exploration. Like, for instance, it could be used as a decent scout ship. It could also act as a staging ground for FPS missions. And here's an idea for you would-be smugglers. The creative team at CIG has tossed around several designs for different kinds of boxes, including refrigerated containers for holding perishables, reinforced containers for keeping delicate items safe, and self-shielded crates that can protect its contents from being scanned. And they've also floated the idea of boxes that would display false information as to what it was carrying in case anyone tried to scan it. So you could invest a little extra UEC into getting one of these fancy boxes and then stow it in the X-1 bay for good measure. I've got to imagine that the AI is going to be too derpy to look there. Even if they think they've found something, they're just going to wander around the main deck until eventually their interest times out and they're forced to go away empty-handed. So if you invest the money into getting some shielded cargo boxes for the 400i, it could end up being a fairly decent smuggling ship. Two other things that the 400i has going for it is that it has a very economic rate of fuel consumption and it's got a long range when it comes to doing quantum jumps. So because of its speed, range, and handling, this vessel on top of everything else is going to end up being a great daily driver. The only downsides to the 400i is that it's not a good vessel for more combat-focused players and it's lacking when it comes to its hauling capacity. And so if either of those two things are major concerns of yours, then this ship might not be the choice for you. 
But if you do want a long-range, mid-sized vessel that can do a little bit of everything, then this is definitely going to be something you're going to want to look into. Well, that's going to be it for what my first impressions are for the 400i. I'd like to thank everybody for liking and subscribing, and I'd like to give a special thanks to my patrons for all their support. And in case you're interested before I leave, I'm going to take you on a quick tour of the ship, so make sure to stick around for that. I've been your host, Law of the West. Thanks for watching, and take care.